All right, so we've now added our navigation div in here. And what we want to do is to create another div that goes right next to it. And this div we'll call main. So you could put your cursor right here. Or notice I'm going to put it right in my code. And I'm just going to tell my code where I want to insert it, right here. So I will now come and insert a new div tag just by coming up here to the common inserts. And we'll create a new CSS rule by going to uh, not tag, excuse me, but rather ID. And we'll start with the pound symbol, once again, and we'll call this one main. So, style.css, the external, click OK. What are we going to do with main? Well, let's go to box. Since the nav section is 200, we could say, I want the main section to actually be whatever's left over. So that's why I said, okay, we got the wrapper at 900, two over there. That leaves us 700 pixels on the right-hand side. Now, no height values ever defined here. And we're going to float this one on the right-hand side, just as we floated the other one on the left. Um, other thing I want to do is to just, well, let's give it a different background color, something that will contrast with the blue. And I'll just click OK. And as you can see now, content for ID main goes here. And if you just preview this in your browser, we can see that we now have two columns of information. Doesn't that look great? Well, at this point, what we're going to be doing is adding a little bit of content in here, and then finally adding a footer to the bottom of our website. Notice uh, one other thing. I had given my background, my wrapper, a background color. And when I did give it that background color, we saw it initially, but then when we put in the headline, well, we didn't see anything there. And as soon as I put in the nav here and the content here, we should be expecting to see that background color for the wrapper. In other words, you know, if the wrapper contains everything in here, then this should be the box, which is about this big, and this one's shorter, so I should be able to see the wrapper right here. I don't, however. And remember, you will not be able to see that wrapper's background color or background image for that matter until you actually enter in the information for your footer. And once the footer's in place, then we'll see the background color. And you'll see it because I made it different from my nav, so we'll really get a sense of what it looks like. In the meantime, however, let's grab some Latin text. So I'm just going to go to lipsum.com in my browser, lipsum. Dot com and we will generate lorem ipsum text and now I'm going to select you know three paragraphs of text here I'll quit the browser I don't need it and check it out I'm gonna ask you to do this inside of your design view so here's my design view I'm gonna select the text that's here and command V or you can right click and paste it in and notice why did I do it in the design view specifically so that when you paste it in, if you pasted it inside of your um, area here, your code view, then it would not have been formatted with paragraphs. You see that? Every paragraph is still there, formatted nicely. So that's great. However, let's do a couple of other things. For example, um, I'm going to introduce a little bit of um, headline here. So let's say exciting headline. And we'll turn this into a H1. All right. Now what I'm going to do is just to enter in another space. And remember, when you enter the way I've done here, it creates a new paragraph, right? So I'm going to select this paragraph, and we'll turn a couple lines into H2 tags, right? So for example, I could come here. I could just press Enter, which makes this be on a separate line. And that's a paragraph, which I will turn into a H2. Great. Now we've also got some text in here. We're not going to style that text just yet. We'll come back and do that in another video. But as you can see, whenever you add content in here, it stretches out the area here that we've defined as our main text. Don't worry if the text in the is touching the edges of the boxes. We're going to deal with that at another time. But notice, even though this box stretched out and this one is smaller, I still can't see that background image. Why is it? Because now we're going to introduce the element that we will allow us to see this, and that's a footer, something that will be at the bottom of this website. If this was my header, we'll have something down at the bottom acting as our footer. So I'll quit this, 
and let's clean up our code first of all so that we can work with this. I'm going to switch to the split screen code view and notice this here is the closing div. See how they get confusing? Div, div, which one belongs to main, which one belongs to wrapper? Well that's why I put in this point here. So at the closing div I'm going to add a HTML comment that says ends main and also another thing that we can do to make our text a little easier to navigate the last paragraph all the way up to the h1 inside of main I'm gonna select all of that and then I'll collapse it and the reason I'm collapsing it is so that now I can go into my code view and we can just separate things like this making it a lot easier for me to read especially when I'm in my split screen view so look I've got this little section here for the header this little section here for nav this little section here for main and there's the closing div for the wrapper now we're going to just position our cursor right here in our code and we will introduce our final div which is our footer div so let's create a new CSS rule the ID will be pound symbol footer and we'll click OK and what are we going to do with the footer well it's the same thing like the header we don't really even need to specify the width I'm just going to specify a height value. We'll make it like 50 less than the top header was. Do we need to float it? No. But I could leave it like this and you'll see what's happening um, if I just click OK. You don't have to do this, but I'm just doing it quickly. And notice things are really kind of messed up. And that's purposely done so that you could see what's happening here. Well, notice what happened. My footer, which I wanted underneath both of these sort of gets pushed up into the space under the the nav that's really kind of bad and not at all what I wanted so how do we sort of fix that well we could double click on footer or you could also click on the little edit our um, pencil icon right here and here's the difference we need it to not float but we need it to clear both which means always be at the bottom of both of those two divs on top of you so that's what's happening here we're clearing both and now if we take a look at this and preview it in Safari among other things we could see that up oh, there's an area down here however I'm gonna ask you let's go back we'll do another edit and we will just add a background color so try to get the same background color as your header and that's going to add some level of consistency, I imagine. And let me just see. Yeah, 069 for my header, 069 for my footer. So let's preview this now, and it'll look a little bit better. So there's your header, there's your footer. As you can see, we've split up the page into four different areas of content. And notice, as soon as I put in the header, ah, now we see that background color from the specific wrapper. So that's showing us how we can put together the very simple navigational area that we see here in a design perspective with a two column layout header and footer. However when we come back we're going to start styling the text that's in here. It is a little bit different from what we saw in the previous examples but not too different so it shouldn't be very difficult for you to grasp. So come back and we'll start styling this text and making it look a lot better and we will also be creating some vertical navigation as opposed to the horizontal navigation we had last time.